scared everybody denny were you scared boy was i were but you causing the scares i ain't afraid of no ghost i'll tell you that much i was scared of whatever that spectral envoy was but <laughs> Ooh. a ghost i ain't scared of no ghost <sighs> hopefully this room remains a little less haunted as we go but we're back in video form again people we don't do it much but when we do it we do it twice in a row somehow for some reason so. <laughs> weirdly it was convenient yeah plans worked out i guess yeah we're back we're back and we're here to kick off of course spooky season cheers oh um my turn too i guess swig of coke zero for the mentally ill ah swig of not coke zero for the mentally stable (laughs) cheers i guess yeah so spooky season denny it's our favorite time of year it really is it's your like life's calling but (laughs) i like i like no one's ever framed it that way for me before but uh i do think you have a point yes um even my autism reveal was very spooky i felt like that was how i needed (laughs) to let the world know (laughs) can't wait to see what's next (laughs) this pictures of the front yard you're gonna love it Ooh, yeah all right Yeah. yeah had to get those last few decorations but get ready for a yard reveal docs and denny over here is ready to show you where he lives so stay tuned on social media for that so this is movies for when and this is movies for when it's spooky season i think is just the title we came up with right like no when you're lighting jack-o'-lanterns movies for when you're lighting jack-o'-lanterns i will change my notes (laughs) post haste uh my apologies but denny We've had some back and forth on what we're going to cover for spooky season, how we're going to do things. Last couple of years we've done it. We've had like a whole bunch of different kinds of themes. But uh, what was the plan this year and how is this spooky season different than all the rest? Well, first of all, it's a very special spooky season when you have a Friday the 13th in October. But we'll get to that later. Um, very soon. Yeah. So... This spooky season, we were going with um, Greg's Horror Watch List was how we came up with uh, with our picks of movies that I wanted to show Greg, movies that Greg wanted to see. Um, and uh, then we're going to cap it off with our annual pick for what you should watch on Halloween night, which I believe we've done Halloween, uh, The Sixth Sense, Texas Chainsaw, and something else. Was, that, was that when we did Get Out? Oh shit! I think it you're right. I forgot out. we did get out. We've done six Halloween movies, for sure. Uh, no, it's Trick or Treat, Get Out, Halloween. That was year one, and then wow. last year we did Beetlejuice, Texas Chainsaw, and Nightmare on Elm Street. That was for movies for when it was Halloween, Man, parts one and two. We really burned through <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> some of the best ones. <laughs> Yeah, look, this is why we started doing one movie a week, is because it kept getting harder and harder to, like, <laughs> pick good movies, I guess, that we actually wanted to watch, especially for, like, repeat themes. We can't come up with three every year for Halloween. I mean, yeah. we could for Halloween, but I what just, would we do next year? Like, Good Lord. I feel like if we kept going at that pace for much longer, we would have had to shut down the podcast within the next year 
because we would have just done like every movie worth doing like obviously not every mm-hmm. movie ever but like we would be out of like stuff worth talking about on a podcast if we'd kept going three a week like i don't know how long that could have uh, reasonably lasted watchable horror isn't the bottomless well you might think it is (laughs) (laughs) but the uh the refined appreciate Mm. unwatchable horror ah speaking of unwatchable horror denny let's talk about the other stuff we watched this week before we get into ghostbusters which is our movie for this week Mm -hmm. it's the one thing we forget is to say what we actually are doing this week but it's in the description you guys you guys can read so we're doing ghostbusters but first denny i'm gonna oh okay i'm gonna talk about all the stuff i watched this week that's cool with you go for it bro for it (sighs) amazing thank you uh for the most part i've actually been playing that nintendo 64 that i got myself for my birthday there it is beautiful look at it over there so beautiful um but my wife was out of town this past weekend she's back now uh she went and had a good time at disney without me with her cousin and everything so i had a lot of time on my hands to watch things normally the things we have been watching together we have been watching pen 15 which is a show i think i talked about on here before but we're doing a little rewatch of it uh pen 15's on hulu super funny if you were a middle schooler at any point in the early 2000s you'll find yourself connecting to this very very well um movies i watched i i talked about unwatchable horror but i think this is i was referencing this but i think it's better than that i watched bo is afraid controversial film controversial film it is objectively extremely well made i think it looks incredible but uh this is just this might just be another classic hit in the can someone tell me if this is good genre and i've been thinking about it a lot it's been living in my head but damn because someone just needs to tell me like if i like it or not (laughs) so i think i enjoyed it and i think when you mentioned it when you had watched it was i think you said something to the effect of I appreciated it more than I watched it. And I more than I enjoyed it, sorry. And that's kind of how I felt. There was like a segment in the middle that was like the most visually engaging and like kind of more interesting side project piece in the middle of the movie. It's a hard ask to make that movie 3 hours long. Yeah, I I remember, like, the last 45 minutes, especially for something that is so abstract, I was like, you've kind of lost your goodwill with me and I don't care anymore. <laughs> like, yeah. like you, you asked a lot of me to be immersed in something this artsy for that long. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to forget about it anytime soon, though. I think it is cool and good. I'm happy that... Ari Aster got to make the movie he wanted to make, and I just hope somebody gives him a great big hug and then, like, a little bit more guidelines on what to make next. <laughs> it is easily my least favorite Ari Aster movie. Uh, but, damn, like... Not that that's an insult. Yeah. Right, but, like, it's it's not, like, it's not a debate which one I like the least. Yeah. Um, high hopes for the fourth one, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like a, you know when someone this young and clearly talented is like making such huge projects and like you can tell there's a certain quality in here like i'll watch anything he makes it's like him and robert eggers it's just like yeah they've only made three movies but i'm going to watch whatever the fourth one is i don't care what it is yep um and the last thing i watched um oh no i I watched two more things sorry the next thing i watched was a a little movie from another um, interesting director, David Lynch. I watched the Nicolas Cage, Laura Dern feature, Wild at Heart. Yeah, I oh knew you'd God. like that. I knew you'd like that. 
Does that hoodie represent uh, your belief in personal freedom and individuality? Only if it was snakeskin, buddy. <laughs> Dude, I was not expecting you to say you watched that this week. I wasn't expecting to watch it, honestly. Like, you got me the DVD, like, a long time ago. And it's this horrible thing I do where it's just like, all right, I have the copy now. And then it sits there for way too long. And I was like... Also guilty. Weiss out of town. It's I can watch whatever I want. I have no idea what this one's going to be like, so let's pop it in. And it was bonkers as hell in a very good way. I really liked it. I had a good time. Maybe a little... Excuse you. Maybe a little lost at certain points kind of in the middle there but like by the end i was just grinning ear to ear i was so happy with it me too um speaking of things that made me pretty happy uh the last thing i watched oh good <laughs> good pose the last thing i watched and it was pretty fun it was a uh, new to paramount plus it was the newest teenage mutant ninja turtles movie mutant mayhem what you all, had a hell of a watch week i know all bangers so far but, yeah it was good. I don't. I enjoyed it a lot. Perfect runtime. A lot of fun. I think I should have watched it in theaters because, man, that movie is like dark. Like mm-hmm. I can't see a thing mm-hmm. with what's happening. Like yeah. I, I, I was like, I can't tell the turtles apart. If they didn't, if they didn't make them different sizes, I don't think I would have been able to tell them apart visually. Because really? I, can't, I can't see the colors of their headbands or anything. Oh. It was just, the main color of the movie was black. Like, it was impossible to see anything. I saw it in theaters, and this was not an issue. So, okay. Um, and yeah, definitely uh, gets worth going to theaters for, because Oops. Yep, I felt like I could always tell them apart, and I loved every second of that movie. Oh, well, it was a lot of fun. Maybe the jokes were a little younger generation for me, but I didn't really care that much um, about that. I still had fun. <sighs> it was a good time. Denny? That's uh, that's my list there. What else? What else did you watch? What, what happened to you? I I had a pretty good watch week. I had one more. Actually, I'm so sorry to interrupt. I had one more thing that I did watch, and I texted you about it. But I know you watched it too, so I'm going to kick off your watch list with the other thing I watched that we both watched. After last episode, I felt obligated to continue the Alien series, and I watched Alien Three. Alien, <laughs> Alien Cubed, as, uh, as as the title would have us believe. Yes, I also watched it. Um, currently going through an Alien hyperfixation. Uh, gonna oh gonna try to take out the whole franchise before October because it is a little off theme with my other hyperfixation. And you know how I love theming and conceptual symmetry, Greg. Yes, <laughs> um, I do. You know how much I need that in my life. Absolutely. Um, so. Yeah, dude. Um, I watched Alien 3. Um, Let's do a little mini episode, because we'll probably never uh, do a whole episode over Alien 3, right? Nah, I'm good. A little little follow-up to our 100th episode. I I wouldn't have told you I watched it if the beginning didn't upset me so much. (laughs) So, a David Fincher movie? Upsetting parts? What? Okay. It was very much, uh, it happened again, energy. (laughs) Shoot. (laughs) Twice she woke up to fight an alien and got blasted into space for hundreds of years. Yeah, she almost did like the Tina Fey eye roll. Like, oh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me one of them stayed on the ship. His face got hugged. Oh, no. <laughs> Here I go again. <laughs> Ripley's back, and this time with time with Lannister in mm. Alien 3, the buzz cut. Uh, she still looks good. Don't she? Yeah. Don't she? Sigourney Weaver is a fox. I gotta give it to her. She's been in her prime for like 45 years. Yep. God yep. Bless her. Yep. So, yeah, it was, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Because it got a lot no of way. like negative hype. It was just kind of like, its biggest crime was not being nearly as good as the first two. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that upsets me in any way. But it doesn't make me feel so hot about the rest of the series. Mm-hmm. As I, I have only, the only other one I have seen is Prometheus. I will watch uh, Covenant and Resurrections, which is 
the next thing you watched, it right? It is the next thing I watched, yes. There we go. Um, but I do want to disagree with you on something. Mm. Its biggest crime is that CGI xenomorph. The practical <laughs> shots of it, awesome. The CGI shots of it, hey baby. <laughs> there were a lot more CGI than practical. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, they were, I mean, it's 1997, right? Six, I think. I think seven was Resurrection. This might be four. This is like 92, 94. Oh, my God. Not I want to say it was after Jurassic Park. So with, that's your, your bar for when you were willing to excuse a movie's CGI is 1993 and after. <laughs> True. Or before, I guess, I should say. Because, um, yeah, I, if I remember right, Resurrection was 97. But what I'm about to figure it out. Yeah, the stick, I, Alien I, 3 was 92. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. Sorry. So Sorry, David. And Resurrection was 97, yeah. So these were all pretty far apart, honestly, these four movies. We, we've gone a uh, span of three decades with four movies. Um, yeah, I know, but uh, it's one of those things where it's like, is that impressive by 1992 standards? Sure, but as a filmmaker, don't attempt it if you can't pull it off. He, they just weren't at a place where they could pull that off no matter how bad David Fincher wanted that to work it just didn't it was horrible it was so bad yeah well he got a lot more license and liberty in future movies and I think he's something tells me this guy's gonna have a decent career <laughs> yeah for yeah. himself <laughs> yeah. it worked out for him everyone I think so <laughs> um Alien Resurrection um yeah interesting movie Okay. Hard to talk about without spoiling three. Um, okay. So let's just say spoilers for Alien Three if you care right now. Does anyone care? Does anyone care? Does anyone care? Does anyone care? Okay, this is now a spoiler okay zone for Alien Three. Um so Ripley dies at the end of Alien Three, but Sigourney Weaver is also an alien resurrection. Um they have been cloning Ripley with the Queen Xenomorph she's impregnated in and um, using the Queen Xenomorphs to make baby Xenomorphs that they're still trying to use for weapons four movies later. Um, our main character, played by Sigourney Weaver, is uh, Ripley 8, um, who is a clone of Ripley, hmm. who also has Xenomorph blood. Um, and because Xenomorphs have genetic memory, she has some of Ripley's memories, so, okay. but not all of them. Um, she also has like super xenomorph strength and acidic blood. Ooh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's there's lots of cool stuff in this. Um, Winona Ryder and uh, oh my god, what's the guy with the fuck like the weird face Hellraiser? Um, oh, <laughs> it's like Steve Buscemi. Uh, <laughs> that's mean. He's he's cool. Oh my god, who's Hellraiser? Oh my gosh, Google and Denny at it again. Can't remember anybody's name, can't remember the year of anything. God. It's not Ron Perlman, the guy oh. with the giant face. You should, have, a... you should have said giant face. Hellboy. I said you said Hellraiser. Face. Did you say Hellboy? Did I say Hellraiser? You said Hellraiser. Yeah. I meant to say Hellboy. Yeah, I could I'm have told sorry. you that. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Okay. Okay. I meant to say Hellboy. So yeah, those two are in it. Um, it's it's very interesting. It's it's a '90s sci-fi movie. Uh, it's probably a little worse than Alien Three, but still not a bad movie. I would say. Okay. Um, if you enjoy weird sci-fi like I do, it's totally worth checking out. I didn't regret watching it. Also, not really anything special, and it's very clear that they have milked this premise for all it is worth. But I kind of yeah. like the premise, so I don't really mind going back to it. You know, I I like this world. I like the world, and uh, I like it when Sigourney Weaver comes back for it. Um, we'll, we'll see how we do as we get into uh, in the next chapters I'm about to venture into. There we go. Whew. All right. What else you watch? Is only the Aliens 3 and 4? Um, no, I also watched... Um, Fear Street, nineteen seventy fucking something. Um, there we go. This is the, this is the third look up oh of the God. episode. Nineteen seventy eight. Fear Street, nineteen seventy eight. Um, if it weren't such a forgettable movie, perhaps I would have remembered ah, its title. Um, I did not swish. enjoy Fear Street, nineteen seventy eight. Um, <laughs> it was really boring. 
Um, I leaned over to Vanessa and was like, this is what I imagined Riverdale is like. <laughs> <laughs> is, is this movie. Um, it's, uh, it's not good. Uh, I barely paid attention after the first 40 minutes. Um, I didn't really like the first Fear Street, and everyone told me that's okay because this one's a lot better. And uh, Were they wrong? Yeah, I liked the first one a lot more than this. Um, oh, jeez. Okay. It was, it was a, 70s movies for, a 70s movie for Zoomers in the sense that it was like mm. all current YA, and it had no 70s atmosphere to it. Like It was all like very modern looking, very crisp, clean imagery. And, like, the soundtrack, they are just blaring 70s Top 40 every fucking two minutes of the movie. To oh, be like, okay. It's the 70s! Woo! And other than... Like, we promise! But it doesn't look like the 70s in any way, shape, or form. You know, like, it's not shot that way. It's yeah. not, like... They're kind of wearing, like... Like theater versions of seventies clothes, you know, like a little wow. bit exaggerated. Like, uh, wow, Bethany, those bell bottom jeans sure are lit, fam. You're like, what the hell Brita. am I watching? Oh, and Britta's in it. So oh, Britta's in it. Britta's in it. Oh. Britta's in it. Right. Shout out to Gillian Jacobs. You rock. <laughs> we love you. We love you. Come on the show. Um, I also watched that, and then I watched Skin and Marink. Mm hmm. This is a uh, another controversial movie that came out this year along with Bo is Afraid. Um, I have seen reviews that say this movie sucks and makes no sense. I have seen uh, reviews that say this movie is a masterpiece. I am officially on the masterpiece side of the debate. Um, I thought it was fantastic. Um, I think my critic score for this is going to be a 47 if that puts... Uh, put, it's in the ballpark of like funny games for me. Yeah. Um, I, I will give a disclaimer to this. You must watch this movie in absolute darkness. Okay. Undistracted with really good sound. Okay. Because, and I want you to watch it because I feel like you're a man who appreciates sound design. Yeah. Uh, even more so than I do. Um, and, like, I watched it at someone else's house with a surround sound, and the speaker was right by my ear. Mm -hmm. And the movie is very much told in whispers. Um, uh, and it was like having the movie whispered in my ear, and it scared the living fuck out of me. Um, there was a jump scare moment, a very, very earned, awesome jump scare, mind you, where I grabbed onto Vanessa's arm and screamed. Like, I'm mm -hmm. with, like... <laughs> colleagues of mine i am watching this movie <laughs> with like i'm with, like people i know through professional counseling and, and my wife had to tell me to stop screaming or stop gripping her arm so hard because mm -hmm. i wasn't i was just squeezing and i screamed um i looked leaned over to my friend and said like hey thanks for ruining my life by inviting mm -hmm. me over to watch this movie um i i am not ashamed to say I had to sleep with the light on last night. I needed a night light. And when I went to the bathroom, I carried that light and put my glasses on because I didn't want any shadows. I didn't know what they were after I watched Ginnamarink, okay? Scariest movie I've seen since Hereditary. I can't put it Ooh. over strongly enough. Okay. Um, we do love Hereditary on here. Um, to, to give you a, a snapshot of it, it's it's told very experimentally um but the narrative is very easy to follow but the cinematography okay. there's even like fan theory debates of like what perspective we're seeing um but uh it starts with um there's these two kids kevin and kaylee and we hear dad on the phone explaining uh that kevin had a head injury he fell down the stairs um but he didn't even need stitches um and kaylee said he was sleepwalking um huh. and then uh got me we're kind of with these kids but we never haven't even seen the kids we just hear them kind of whisper you're basically seeing the world through a child's perspective of like if you remember like growing up and like looking at door frames for a really long time while you heard adults murmur in other rooms you know what i'm talking mm. about yeah um it tells the story from that perspective really well and you feel very like intimate with the child characters that you don't ever really see you get a couple like glimpses of them but you feel like 
you're very much in their world and their world is fucking terrifying because uh, well, I'll just say this is a supernatural horror um, and, ah. and that's all I'll say Okay. Um, it is um, someone uh, someone I watched it with said it was like if David Lynch directed Poltergeist um, interesting my response okay. have you seen Poltergeist yeah yeah. My response was David Lynch wouldn't have given it that much structure. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> it did have some of the like dreamlike qualities of a Lynch film, but like I felt like I could always tell what was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but like their their method of telling it made the scares so unique. Um, whew, I really want you to watch it because I really want to talk about it more with you. Okay. I would love it if we found it. I would nominate it for a Halloween night movie if we're going to let the audience vote on oh, that. Oh, okay. Um, but you should watch it before that. CBD, I guess. It's so fucking good. Skin of Rink is like I I want more people to have seen it because it's one of those movies where I'm like thinking about it so much that I just want to talk about it with anyone I can. So if you out there in, in Radio Land or YouTube Land, mm-hmm. if you've seen Skin of Rink, slide into my DMs. Uh, support me in this struggle. They're wide open, folks. DMs wide open. Nice. <clears throat> I think you. I think I think we've skinned this marink plenty. So Gross, Danny, Greg, mm-hmm. we ready to get into it? We're gonna kick off spooky season with a spooky but not scary movie, which is a thing we've done before. Yes, but yeah, man, um, we kind of we had a few weeks we wanted to do spooky season. So it was basically, with Friday the 13th, okay, of course, being smack in the middle of it. Denny picked a couple movies to do, I picked a couple movies to do, and we're going to decide on Halloween later. So one of our original picks was Ghostbusters. I decided to make it my own because Denny wanted to watch a couple of other really cool things. Yes. For spooky season, <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Ghostbusters, it's, uh, it's like Jaws. It's one of those classic movies that I just had never seen up until this year and it's just kind of like i never watched it as a kid i have no nostalgia for it so now it's time to finally watch it and it's been so referenced in pop culture my whole life that i feel like i have so i don't really feel like getting around to it but i'm glad i got around to it this time denny uh ghostbusters is from 1984 and for once in a very long time, the Peacock streaming service is making itself useful. You can watch it there. You can watch this one, Ghostbusters 2, um, probably some of the newer ones too. But why would you do that to yourself? Um, just watch the first one. I don't know if the second one's any good. Have you seen the second one? It's been a really long time, and this made me want to watch it. Um, for a long time, I'd seen the second one so many more times than I'd seen the first one because I feel like. Interesting. But it, like, it annoyed me, because it was like, I'd want to watch Ghostbusters, and I'd search on Netflix, and it would be like, ooh, we got Ghostbusters 2, and I'd be like, <laughs> kind of in the mood for that. It's fine. And it was in an era where if it wasn't on Netflix, there weren't, like, a lot of other options, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, but I honestly haven't seen it in long enough to comment. Uh, I know... There's no way it's as good as the first one because I was always mm-hmm. a little bit disappointed when I watched it. Um, but yeah. I think seeing it with fresh eyes, I might be a little more fair to it. It used to annoy me very much <laughs> just because... Simply by existing, right? It was like a compromise, you know? Yeah. I had yeah. like compromise with the streaming service. That makes sense. Well, we'll stick with the first one today. Uh, we're going to start with our Critiker Review of the Week, which I selected right before we hit record because I forgot to do it earlier. Um, so luckily I had Denny to help me out on picking the review of the week. And our Critical Review of the Week for Ghostbusters. This user gave it a 99 out of 100. That's big. And they said, and I quote, If this movie were a woman, I would take it out to a nice dinner and maybe to see a movie, and then I would take it home and bang it raw. Why would you do this? <laughs> Bustin makes him feel good. Mmm. Ah. That's fine. <clears throat> this is a weird way to talk about it. A movie's like a woman, you see? Just want to 
<laughs> you know how when you're watching Ghostbusters and you're like, I want to fuck that. <laughs> well, what if you could? <laughs> what if you could? You're going to have to take it out for dinner first. You know how movies are. Uh, I, I couldn't pick anything else after reading that. It's just the oddest take I've ever seen for a movie. So... We're here to talk about Ghostbusters. I guess I kind of gave away my relationship with the movie already in that I haven't seen it and I didn't avoid it, but it just felt never felt necessarily to act, necessary to actually watch it um, up until this podcast, and it felt like very necessary. Yeah. What was your uh, relationship with Ghostbusters? I assume you were like most kids or most people our age and had seen it at some point during childhood. Oh, dude, I don't like... It's one of those movies where I can't really tell you the first time I watched it. You know, like, I, I don't remember being like a... <gasps> and that was the day I... Saw, like, I always remember having seen Ghostbusters. Right. Um, like, yeah. from from uh, from very early in my life. Because it was, like... It was an insanely popular movie. Like, it did, like... If you adjust for inflation, it's still, like, a contender for one of the biggest box offices of all time when you... Uh, you know, realize that movies, you know, used to cost a dollar, mm-hmm. <laughs> but now they cost $27, so mm-hmm. it's a little easier to smash those records. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, Ghostbusters was wildly popular, and um, it was a really cool movie, and a, uh, like a movie with really popular, edgy comedians, mm-hmm. but there was nothing really inappropriate about the movie. There was no reason you couldn't yeah. show it to kids. But it was a movie that adults thought was funny. And so, like, I'm sure my parents were delighted to show it to me. You know, Mm -hmm. like, it was something that uh, me being, like, always into, like, monsters and spooky stuff, like, from a very young age. You know, Mm -hmm. like, um, this was was a layup for what would I show Denny as a child. Um, So, I've watched it so many times, man. I've been... uh, a couple of years ago, Vanessa and I were, uh, I was, I was the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man for Halloween mm-hmm. and she was Slimer and, uh, it was one of the creepiest Halloween costumes I ever did next to 2010's Mickey Mouse, I would say my ultimate <laughs> Another classic, a, D- a Denny costume classic. Yes. The Stay Puft Man and Mickey Mouse, honestly. Um, again, slide into those DMs for some <laughs> retro picks. Uh, blast from the past, you see. Um, well, I guess we'll start chatting about the movie a little with kind of the meta-ness of what's going on with the podcast here. We covered Alien, then Aliens, and then you and I both watched more Alien movies. And I also watched Galaxy Quest. And you also watched Galaxy Quest before we did the Alien and Aliens discussion. Are we burnt out on Sigourney Weaver? Because we have officially done the Sigourney Weaver hat trick for movies we've covered with three in a row. Yeah. And then, like, four, at least, <laughs> like yep. outside of what we've covered on here. I, I think she's locked down for my most watched actor on these years. Uh, this year's Letterboxd stats. Um, she's going to join mm-hmm. the elite ranks. Uh, t- tune in next week when we find a way to make Holes a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I am nowhere near burnt out on Sigourney Weaver. Uh, I bought a Sigourney Weaver toy for my toy room. I'm, I'm yeah. a fan. Uh, I'm not like gonna sit down and watch Avatar or anything crazy. I'm not that into it. I was gonna say post pics of the, of the oh, toy yeah. shop. I'm sure the people would love to see it. Here's an image now. Let's hope I remember to do that. So <laughs> we're not burnt out on Sigourney. I think the, we did cover cabin in the woods which she was briefly in oh that's right she was and I, i'm never gonna get tired of her she's she's an all-time actress like i said she's been in her prime for like 45 years now yep. um i am i wouldn't call her the star of this movie of course not but like she's the crux of a lot of the plot so mm-hmm. love seeing her in a very different role than I think we were used to watching the last couple of weeks with the <laughs> she's a very non Ellen Ripley style character even though she does kind of have that um, assertive sort of personality that she's able to communicate so well it's just like she has a good head on her shoulders and she's willing to speak her mind but <clears throat> situation's a lot different here I guess yeah you know it's honestly 
my one big knock against this movie that I really don't like. Um, hmm. I don't like the uh, the romance between Sigourney Weaver and Bill Murray. Um, I think they don't really have much chemistry. Okay. Um, I think Bill Murray's character, Venkman, is a total creep. Um, like, stalks her and, like, does weird, <laughs> inappropriate, dishonest things to woo her. And the whole thing is written with a weird understanding of women and what, like, they are attracted to. I thought, <laughs> like, um, Vanessa also had a reaction to it. Um, I, I, I feel like, uh, it's it's not a very Sigourney Weaver role. Um, yeah, she's she's a very big name around this time, obviously, but it's not a very Sigourney role. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Like a lot of what she does does shine through, like I said, but it is very like, um, maybe not damsel in distress, but it does kind of go that way, sort of role and. Maybe a little less agency with her. It it does seem like she does have complete, like a very ambitious life that she's living, but also at the same time is just like, oh mom, you know I'm just trying to make it in the big city. I've got a date. I know a date. Can you believe it? It's just kind of a weird. I don't know. There's something weirdly written about her character. Nothing about her performance. Just weirdly written. Uh, thanks Dan Aykroyd, uh, who I loved in this movie. Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. You know what I learned about him? What? He's also autistic. Ah, look at him. Yeah. But you know what else, Greg? Look at you guys. Maybe you should write a movie. Maybe. Well, there's something I've been meaning to talk to you about. Me? I actually meant to get to this way earlier in the episode. I'm so sorry. Uh Uh-oh. It's just, you're currently on an episode of Ambush Trivia. False. See, you have to wait. Oh what shit! I'm bad at I'm bad at this. Welcome to Ambush Trivia, the game show where the contestants don't know they're gonna play. Um, I meant to do this before the episode started, but here we are, Greg. Yeah. There are five questions. Five questions. If you answer three of them correct, you'll be told you are a good Greggy boy. I like that. Now. You can answer all five correct in the bonus rounds and get an extra very for each question you get correct. Okay. Are you ready for this? Will the Metalloid Maniac be revealing the questions on a gigantic board that he's just flying around on? The wall is his floor. (laughs) He made this. He made it. (laughs) It's his ground. Are you ready, Greg, for the Uh, first question in Ambush Trivia? I was avoiding it, but yeah, hit me with question one, please. Greg, Mm -hmm. in real life, which Ghostbuster famously actually really believes in ghosts? I guess it's not that famous. I'm going to take that as a clue. Famous rhymes with Ramus, Sam Ramus. Wow. Wow. No, and it's Fuck! it's also Harold Ramis. Harold and Ramis. Oh no, it is Dan no. Aykroyd. No, if you want to go down a weird no. YouTube rabbit hole, Harold there's Ramis. footage of that man saying that when his kids watch Ghostbusters and they're like, "Daddy, is that real?" He says, "Yes, kids, it's real. That is right." Vanessa just texted me; she got it correct, oh. and she said he's crazy, rigged. <laughs> Greg. Yeah, hit me with question two. I'm not off to a hot start. But... No, no, no. We we're losing those bonus rounds. Yeah. We already talked about Ghostbusters 1 and 2, but there is a canonical third installment in the franchise involving voice work from all of the original Ghostbusters. It is Ghostbusters the video game. When was this game released? You can guess the decade. Give me the decade that Ghostbusters the video game, a.k.a. Ghostbusters 3, was released. Interesting. Um, so this was 84. Ghostbusters 2 feels like it would have been like 87, 88. I don't know anything about it. I'm tempted to say 90s, but I feel like this was a... I think there was like a um, 
either a Nintendo or Super Nintendo Ghostbusters game, but I don't think that was like a Ghostbusters the video game. For some reason, my mind is telling me that that was an Xbox 360 game. I'm going to guess the 2000s. That is correct, Greg. Oh, 2009 oh. is when Ghostbusters the video game was released. <laughs> Vanessa got that yes. one incorrect. Yes. She guessed 1995. You are currently tied at one to one with Vanessa. You each have one correct. It, that's that would be the logical progression. But I do, for whatever reason, remember being like seeing Ghostbusters the video game for Xbox 360 just existing. I didn't. I never played it. I never picked it up. Um, nobody i know had it but i remember it being like no this is like a new thing Mm -hmm. and i was like okay i guess i don't care because i of course hadn't seen the movies (laughs) (laughs) i think they might have had ghostbuster video games on like the nes and super nes but i'm i'm not 100 percent on that i didn't have those either hey what you gonna do what you gonna do i really want to play that game i haven't played it i've always been curious yeah we'll we'll find it we'll find an xbox for you are you ready for question number three? I can't believe I got that second one right, so that was good. please, let's go for Great three. instincts, great deductive reasoning. Um, Sam Ramis, excuse me, Harold Ramis, was one of the writers for Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. Yes, he was. It's a multiple choice question. Okay. Which other Bill Murray project did Harold Ramis also write? What the hell? A, Meatballs. B, Groundhog Day. C, what about Bob? D, Space Jam. He helped write? I remember he was in Space Jam. I didn't realize he helped write it. I feel like the uh, time proximity to Groundhog Day has me leaning that way. But like the, maybe the sense of humor it has me leaning towards what about bob so i'm gonna guess c what about bob that's also vanessa's guess and you are both incorrect ah. the correct answer is groundhog day ah damn it you okay. trust your, your heart greg vanessa said lame uh, <laughs> vanessa is correct about that all right uh she's in the other room by the way folks Question number four. Are you ready? We still got a chance to pass this thing. You can't. You can't miss any more. Yeah, exactly. Vanessa, you're on the honor system on this. Greg, I'm going to ask you on the honor system as well. Okay. Without using your phone or the internet, name the four Ghostbusters. 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 <laughs> Ghost suburbs. Uh, <laughs> like the actors or the the characters. Characters. Oh. Uh, Vinkman, Stance, my phone's over here, I'm not going to look at it, um, Vinkman and Stance, there's like a thousand Gen Xers just screaming (laughs) at me, (laughs) oh my gosh. I know their faces. I do not know their names. Search your memories of Stranger Things season two. I've no. I've no, 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 no. That's not going to help. <laughs> uh, Hopper. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot, man. Is Vanessa texting you by any chance? Yes, she. Uh, she has guessed the same things you have guessed so far. Stan Vigman. Oh, uh, I was going to say Beaker, but that's a mu- that's a Muppet that. <laughs> that my wife got me a mug of um oh god i'm i'm i don't even think i have it in my notes honestly so i i i think i'm gonna give up and say i don't know Vanessa that's i guess smart guy mcgee i think that's her giving up too <laughs> rick moranis and vanessa also guessed the other one no one's gonna guess uh. donner or blitzen oh my god <laughs> I would have given you 75% as a correct answer. If you could guess, you've guessed two correct. If you could guess one more, you'd pass the question. Stance. Who was Ramus's character? 
I'll accept the first or last name of Ramus' character. Oh my gosh, dude. Einstein the dog from Back to the Future. <laughs> oh no. This is gonna it's gonna hurt me to hurt me to hear, but go ahead. I, I'm giving I'm I'm officially giving up. The correct answers were Vinkman, Stance, Spangler, and wow. Winston. I wasn't gonna get that. <laughs> Egon Spangler would have Egon I would have taken as well. Yeah, I probably should have remembered it too. <sighs> Greg, do you wanna play to make the score look good? Yeah, I'll go ahead and take the last question. All right, question number five. Should have watched question. it twice. Should have watched it twice. Who was originally offered the role of Winston, the fourth Ghostbuster that joins later in the movie? Mm-hmm. A, Chris Rock. B, Michael J. Fox. C, no. Eddie Murphy. D, Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman. I'm going to say Eddie Murphy, the career arc lines up. But if it's Chris Rock, I won't be surprised. But I will go Eddie Murphy. Vanessa also went with Eddie Murphy, and you are both correct. You have tied at two and three. Vanessa and Greg have the same score. Um, we tried. We Thanks tried. for playing. You know what? You're still a good Greggy boy in my heart, but that last one was something that always bothered me because a note I had was, story-wise, I didn't understand the point of Winston joining. Like, why does he show up and add a fourth Ghostbuster? There's never really anything significant that his character does that couldn't be done by the other characters. It just never made sense to me. Well, he works there now. <clears throat> right. He gets a job there. Yeah, um, he's, he's there. But uh, he was originally supposed to be played by Eddie Murphy, and he was supposed to join them much earlier um, and uh, and be a bigger part of the movie. So okay. I guess at some point they decided to hire a less important black guy and make the role less important, and that was their solution to not getting Eddie Murphy. I, I, uh, I don't know what else the, uh, the casting was with that, um, but um, what can I say? I love, I love the movie. I love the trivia, and of course... I don't love the ambush. I mean no disrespect to Ernie Hudson, who played Winston Zedmore. Um, I had to look up his Winston's... Uh, I always thought Winston was his last name. His last name is Zedmore, but I'm like 80% sure his Ghostbusters uniform says Winston. Um, so, I don't know, but yeah. Um, so, that was ambush trivia. Uh, you can't win them all. No, sure but can't. In my heart, you're a very, very, very good Greggy boy. But no. in reality, you're just a Greggy boy. <laughs> in reality, you're, I'm just okay. And I'll, no, I'm, you're, I'll be okay. You're great in reality. You just don't know that much about Ghostbusters. I'll take that. All right, Denny. Speaking of Ghostbusters, uh, how are you feeling about it? I really enjoy the movie. Um, I've yeah. been thinking about it ever since i saw it um i think i got all my negativity out about it um because to me this is like a great movie that has a couple glaring flaws uh that, that keep it from reaching that next level but still a sentimental favorite um i uh i really love it but uh dude i was raised on it of course i love it i'm more interested in hearing your takes as a first time watcher um was it the napoleon dynamite effect was this over referenced well i i know for a fact ghostbusters is over referenced in our culture to the point that yeah ghostbusters is like a serious dramatic franchise at this point and it couldn't be less in the spirit oh of God. the yeah. original ghostbusters movie <laughs> when people watch the new ghostbusters they want to be reminded of the how their hearts felt when they first watched the original no fuck you dude in the Finn, sounds bad in the finn wolfhart one in the trailer when they're like discovering the ecto one underneath sheets and it's all serious and dramatic mm -hmm. i kept waiting for what i thought was obviously going to happen which was they hit like a and then like show like how fun the movie's gonna be and then it just never happened. It just never happened. It was just a super serious this, Ghostbusters trailer. This like, is the Ghostbusters. What the fuck is that? It's Who would watch serious. that? 
Ghostbusters is not a joke. Ghost- it's my life. Ghostbusters is a joke. It's one of the yeah. best, <laughs> most respected comedies ever made. <laughs> fucking that shit is so much more offensive to me than 2016 Ghostbusters. Like mm. so you like it's one thing to like fuck up the source material and call it feminism. It's another thing to like <laughs> fundamentally misunderstand the appeal of the source material at least <laughs> ghostbusters 2016 was intended to be funny mm-hmm. uh, i believe paul fig thought something was funny about that uh, i didn't see that one or i didn't see it either i saw the trailers i remain ignorant life. intentionally and it's because of my misogyny just kidding it's because that movie looks like it fucking blows <laughs> well there you have it um yeah i won't see the sequels or anything you know except for two in the video game of course but um uh legacy sequels legacy reboots are what like how many of those have actually hit or at least like truly like resonated with the source material from what they're like referencing it's like it just doesn't happen top gun maverick maybe that was a cool movie and that's all it needed to be. It's just like, hey, let's just make something cool. And they just made something cool. It didn't just over, like, wax dramatic about the original source material the whole time, which sounds that's, like these do. That's what I can't stand is the, like, making every little thing about the source material important. You know, like, yeah, oh like, my god. <laughs> it's like, um, what was it? Like in the, um, the most recent Star Wars one, like, we gave Chewie his gold medal. I was like, shut up. Like, <laughs> that's what was missing? Like, it's okay, we fixed those movies now that we gave him his gold medal. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's something I don't get, but it makes a quadrillion dollars every single time it happens, so it's not going to stop anytime soon. I'm, I, at least like with the Alien franchise, it is trying to like continue the story, and it has been going on for longer than Ghostbusters. But we're not trying to like restart it or anything. We're just kind of like trying to build on the original story. Like, if there was going to be like a Friday the Thirteenth movie coming out this year, that's like trying to build off like the franchise, even though it kind of went oddly quiet. Well, for what legally quiet it went legal oh yeah i guess it not. remains <laughs> legally quiet <laughs> it sucks everyone's mad <laughs> but like the halloween movies even though it's kind of a jumbled timeline and everything i'm not saying it's good that those new movies exist and we've talked about it too many weeks in a row now <laughs> it's more sensible to just like have like okay we're gonna make a new kind of set of the movies following roughly the storyline from before it's not like we're gonna remake well, I know there's a Rob Zombie new remake, right? So I don't know. Oh yeah, I'm just listing oh, examples yeah. that I'm thinking of. I'm, I'm I'm I have the cold take of liking the Rob Zombie remake. I <laughs> haven't seen it yet. It's pretty fun, man. It's it's not you know it's not Carpenter's Halloween, but it's, mm-hmm. it's pretty fun. I liked it for what it was. Uh, I'll watch it at some point, and hey, maybe it'll come up in a episode in the future. Who knows? But uh, Ghostbusters, man. Like what you were saying, you were waiting for for the trailer for Afterlife. Basically, was a yeah. The first of all, kick-ass original song, one of the best. Yeah. Oh, if not the generation-defining um, intro song or like um, made title song track for the movie. I wondered if it was the reason so many movies got their own song dream warriors like yeah Yeah. (laughs) like in in the 80s and 90s so many movies had their own song like so many like small time not important movies like had an original song Mm -hmm. about the movie written for the credits and uh i wonder if ghostbusters succeeding is like what made studios do that over and over and over again thinking like god the audience loves when the movie has its own song not understanding that it was just a good song that fit the movie well. Yeah, <laughs> that's why it was popular. It was it was a good song, not because uh, you just can't get that magic on purpose every time. Is what yeah. studios can't understand. Yeah, exactly. And I I think it sets off the movie perfectly because you're introduced. It's played very serious. It's played very spooky of just like the haunted library and 
there's a ghost and uh, the, the librarian finally is finally sees the ghost and is petrified and then we hit this fucking banger track and it's just like this oh yeah we built up the scary thing actually it's a ton of fun so get ready for that you're gonna get a little bit of both it's gonna be a little what's going on and then a whole lot of fun while we explore what's going on so can't think of a better intro for this movie not gonna lie i see why it's uh why it took off um how are you feeling what else what else you got well you're not some... even looking at your notes you just had trivia questions on there yeah oh i had some notes but mm. i i have i have some talking points i know from my heart um one that i yeah. i, I want to get out of the way because it's a discussion that needs to be had um are you aware that we are currently reviewing a piece of conservative propaganda i guess not so check this out okay the ghostbusters um are working uh are working in a university uh essentially wasting public funds on bullshit experiments they mm -hmm. even say like you know what the private sector's like they want results like they mm -hmm. They love that they're just a bunch of university bullshitters and they get thrown out on their asses. Um, <clears throat> but they do what any upstanding self-made person that pulls themselves up from their bootstraps should do. They take out a third mortgage on one of their homes mm -hmm. to start a business that there is no demand for. But the free market rewards them by creating a demand for their business and they become very prosperous and hire two employees and damn it greg the only thing that can stop them it's the fucking regulations from the environmental protection agency mm -hmm. hello the big hand of government reaching in God, to with their green the future trying to ruin successful small businesses and now the whole city's at risk all because of these environmentalists greg <laughs> These corrupt, idiot environmentalists who clearly just have an axe to grind with self-made ghost millionaires. <laughs> um, but like any piece of propaganda that works well, um, it's really good. <laughs> so <laughs> most people don't mind, but uh, this movie has what uh, I think a lot of people who like it would consider very cold political takes if you break it down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, it all makes sense when you lay it out before me like that. I, I guess I gotta, I guess I gotta agree. It really grinds my gears that the the, the environmentalists shut them down. Like that's such a like piece of shit thing to put in a movie where the like the environmental protection people are the evil bad guys. The the most evil bad guys, and then it's like, well, who else would you pick? I guess it could be like the like garbage men who don't like that they're disposing of ectoplasm mm. that's an apolitical see first thing i thought of i was like what's something that's like neutral? yeah yeah denny the working class are the bad guys no the, this is for the working yeah, the working class shouldn't be working for the government they should be starting small businesses then we'd all be self-made millionaires off of our small businesses and we wouldn't need anyone to do other jobs because we'd all own a bar and grill Owning a timeshare in Vail with our bar and grill, Greg. That's my utopia. This is the future conservatives want. <laughs> uh, all right, I think I got other notes here, I guess. <sighs> I think uh, you you got your negatives out of the way. I think I'll get yeah. my, my main one out of the way. Okay. Uh, I didn't like the part where Ray was getting blown by a ghost. That was fucking <laughs> weird. I loved it it's just like okay he's having a fun little dream for himself <laughs> Let, let's film it and put it in the movie weird man real weird oh it's the little things about this movie that i enjoy hmm. that was a big negative well you never me. saw it not a huge negative but you know it's just kind of like eh. this is taking me out a little bit i guess it just reminded me of, like, uh, because of stuff like Poltergeist and Nightmare on Elm Street, um, there's a lot of, like, ghost, uncomfortable rape scenes in horror. Yeah. Um, but, like, to me it was hilarious that they did a spin on that where a ghost was, like, consensually sucking a guy's dick and the guy liked it. That's comedy. But it was a dream. I don't know. Whatever. 
That's comedy. That's comedy. Yeah, from the writer of the movie. What if I got my wiener sucked? <laughs> As a joke, see? <laughs> and it was consensual, right? As a joke, see? Okay, buddy. I'm just going to take his side on this. I get it. Um, but yeah, I think... I think what makes this movie work so well is things being allowed to kind of breathe the way they are. There's a whole lot of different voices. You said this is like a whole bunch of different edgy comedians at the time, and it mm-hmm. feels like everybody's kind of doing their own shtick. And letting that play out and letting it all kind of work together, even though it doesn't feel like it should, I think absolutely rocks. Like, Dan Aykroyd's character is just so childlike, kind of. And it, it's just like Bill Murray's, like, sarcasm isn't, like... In a lesser movie, it would seem like Bill Murray was making fun of Dan Aykroyd's character, but it's not. It seems like he really does like him. He's just kind of like, he can't help being a quippy asshole sometimes. And it's very funny. And it's just like, he doesn't mean any harm by it. It's just... The two characters play off each other very well, despite mm-hmm. being two completely different sides of a comedic coin, I guess. Yeah, Vinkman has, like, um, <clears throat> this weird energy of being, like, the coolest nerd conspiracy theorist. Like, he's supposed to be, like, the suave one out of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, and this is something I, like, I respect Bill Murray and feel inspired by him for this. He is just not a very attractive man, if you ask me. Um, and he has achieved a lot in spite of that and been mm-hmm. cast as, like, the hunk in movies like this, despite uh, really uh, just uh, not, not, not your dreamboat, you know? Not a dreamboat. Uh, yeah, and we've talked about Nicolas Cage being the... <laughs> Never mind. No. It's like movies where like somebody that's clearly 20 years older than the actors they're acting across from Mm -hmm. is just like oh my gosh i'm so in love with this guy like when we covered next or whatever it's just like you're not really attracted to him right (laughs) yeah yeah this this maybe doesn't feel just like that but it is kind of like a this guy's the the big time player okay i guess so i would have gone for rick moranis Dude, Rick Moranis is the shit. What a treasure he is in this movie. Mm -hmm. Goated. Like, the man is just goated. He's so good. Uh, I can't believe we've only covered two of his movies. What else have we done? How uh, many the kids? No, Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, yeah, of course. (laughs) Um, It's it's wild that we've only done those two. But, um, hey, I love it. I mean, he's not in a ton. Like, I remember oh, reading yeah. an article. I actually... Careful with these. You just took out the internet. Oh, shit. My bad. Yeah, um, we don't need it today, but there you go. I remember uh, I was reading an article that this movie reminded me of. Of uh, I want to say it was with the AV Club, um, where Rick Moranis said, like, he's not really retired. He's just hasn't really been offered a role that he's interested in in a really long time but he's still like open to doing movies if a project interested him but he's like just happy being a father feels no real itch to go be in movies but totally yeah. open to it and i was like oh man maybe rick moranis is going to be in more stuff like people will maybe offer him that and then i thought yeah i read that article in 2015 no no <laughs> and i had a weird time passing passage of time moment i was like I was in the parking lot at the swim lessons place I worked at in 2015 when I read that article. That was three different Denny's ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> serious. I've had so many eras since then. <laughs> oh, I I would have loved to see him back. I remember like other pieces written about him and like different interviews. It's just like seems like he's living a pretty peaceful and normal life. And we got. We got a lot out of them in the 80s and 90s. We want, we got the Flintstones. We're good. Yep. We're good. Something I totally respect. Like, it sucks as a fan because, like, I obviously would love more Rick Moranis content. We got Kel Mitchell back for yeah, Good for Burger, Burger 2. Too. Yeah. Yeah. In theaters later. I Ish. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe theaters. In I'm... theaters, technically plural. <laughs> Three or four of them. At least four theaters will have Good Burger 2. <laughs> Um, Check your Nickelodeon Plus subscription for more. 
What were we even saying? I don't oh, care. I would. I would Rick Moranis. Yeah. I would love if we had more Rick Moranis to watch. But I like. Mm-hmm. I have so much respect for like making a handful of good movies, getting a bunch of money, and dipping. Like and just yeah. getting out of the life. You know, I, nothing to prove. You you did your thing. Like just, that's so cool to just do that and go away and not live as a permanent celebrity. That's such a cool move. I fully respect it too. Um, you know, it was a lot easier when you could actually make more than like thirteen cents off your royalties <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> over the course of a year for doing like five major motion pictures. But mm-hmm. you know, that's the world we live in now, I guess. Uh, that that money's got to go to those uh, corporate executives. Yeah, you know? the, the people in charge of the studios—they're the ones. Like, who? Great. If, if Rick Moranis made more than a dollar for all the time, all the downloads for Ghostbusters, how would what's his face get his fifth super yacht? Avatar three doesn't just pay for itself, Greg. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that budget's got to come from somewhere, buddy. <laughs> Sorry, it's going to come out of Rick Moranis' pockets. <laughs> Jim Cameron is robbing from Rick Moranis. <laughs> I heard Rick Moranis is on the streets trying to get an audition for Avatar 3. And James Cameron spit in his face and said, Fuck you. <laughs> you don't fit in the suits. And he said, Honey, we shrunk ourselves was mid. And that was too far. Too fucking far. Shrink your expectations, Rick. Uh, hey, none of this really happened, folks. Um, <laughs> uh, anyways, I uh, I love him as a uh, Sigourney Weaver simp in this movie. Oh, uh, me too. He's playing all of us in this movie. <laughs> While we're on their notes uh, of their characters, very interesting. Um, I meant to say this in my see your face. Am I? Am I? Oh, sorry. there you go. I'm autistic. I sit weird. <laughs> That's a thing. If you didn't know that, autistic people sit weird. I've been told my whole life I sit weird, and now I have a diagnosis to prove it. Um, Ooh. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, so... Characters. I had, when I was a child, mm-hmm. you know those dogs in, in the movie? You know They're, dogs? No. Oh, no, yeah. The, 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 into. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> I had a dogs? nightmare that haunts me to this day involving those, a swimming pool, my grandma, and a mall parking lot. And it scared the fuck out of me when I was a little kid. Um, those you things still remember it, huh? Oh, dude, burned into my memory. As mm. soon as I saw the dog, I was like, "Oh, it's <laughs> back for me!" Actual terror. <laughs> uh, sorry to relive uh, past dreamed traumas, Danny. That's got to be really tricky. Yeah. <clears throat> what you looking at? Oh, just my notes. Oh, okay. Anything good in there? Um, I love that the... Uh, remember at the very beginning of the movie when Vinkman is doing the uh, experiment to see if negative re- reinforcement affects ESP? ESPN. Actually, yes. Yeah. Um, it actually works. Um, the guy that... Um, <laughs> The guy that he is giving negative shocks to actually starts guessing right, but Vinkman's trying to get laid and he doesn't notice that he actually discovered something. <laughs> An all timer. And when he's being a creep. Um yeah, he's creepy. He's like a he's an enjoyable to watch slime ball. Mm-hmm. Maybe not super always super likable, <clears throat> but I enjoy watching him. Because when he comes into the aid of the Ghostbusters, I'm like, mm-hmm. Yes. This guy rocks. Glad he's finally paying attention, I guess. Did you notice that when uh, Sigourney Weaver is bringing her groceries in, very mm-hmm. prominently uh, facing the camera, we see a bag of Stay Puffed Marshmallows. I did notice that. I thought that was going to be the origin <clears throat> of the Marshmallow Man, mm-hmm. which, you know, has been referenced to death. So I was like, oh, that's going to come into play later. So I did notice it, and I was a little surprised that that's not, like, what spawned the giant monster in the city yeah it was just a like kind of classy way to set it up you know like to mm-hmm. establish like it just a this nice is a brand detail. in this universe yeah, yeah yeah and to sort of put it in the audience's mind because like the stay puffed marshmallow man is referencing nothing it's mm-hmm. referencing a brand of marshmallows that the movie made up mm-hmm. but the audience feels like it's a recognizable icon you know like because it, it, it's had that image in their head already mm-hmm. um Man, 
And how funny is that payoff? With <laughs> Dan Aykroyd. I imagine the Stay, the stay Puft Marshmallow Man. I couldn't help it. It's, uh, it's more satisfying if you haven't been told what's going to happen. Sure, times, sure, I guess. But yeah, it is just like... It's, you tell me to think of nothing, I'm going to think of something. Yeah. I totally get that. So I think the joke pays off very well. And uh, just also a great moment for the effects in this movie. I think that's one of the things that makes it. Mm. Um, what, yeah. what were your thoughts on our ghosties and ghoulies that we saw in this movie? Uh, solid effects. It's like I was talking about for a couple of our Spielberg movies. Is like I can watch something and know that strings are being pulled and then in some cases know what strings are being pulled to create like the visual effect and then but if the movie is immersive and good enough i'm not going to question it or care enough to question it or even if i know like what's really going on it's not going to break my immersion in any way so i thought a lot of the effects were very good and i think by the time we got to the point where the stay puff uh marshmallow man became realized um i wasn't looking for how i was looking for what so i was i was very immersed in it and i was just like oh it's a big marshmallow monster now no, this looks cool so a very effective effect mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and only achieved by making effective effects leading up to that point give me some more year notes i've i honestly i didn't write a lot for this movie um I, I feel like I can just talk, you know, but I, I'm very interested in your first time um, watch reactions. I was kind of surprised. Yeah, I, I didn't have like too terribly much. I think a lot of what you brought up, I had notes on and I was able to build off them. I think I was kind of, I didn't expect for the world that this movie is based on to be so um easy to kind of get into as goofy as it is it's mm -hmm. a very goofy premise and it's just like oh there's ghosts in new york now i didn't expect it to be i expected them to be like oh we're discovering ghosts and everyone's like ghosts are real and then we have to prove to the city that ghosts are real then mm -hmm. we can bust mm -hmm. them i was yeah. expecting something like that but this is just like yeah, of course there's ghosts. Like, I think there's been a ghost in this hotel for decades, but now it's kind of causing problems, so if you guys could come in. It's it's a very goofy world that doesn't require a lot of establishment or buy-in from the audience. So yeah. I was I was kind of surprised by that. It's what I wasn't expecting, I guess. Very much so, yeah. It's, 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 it's weird, like... <laughs> They, they just get us to go along with so much because it's fun yeah like that's that's essentially like um how how does how does how does it transfer the ghost within a some sort of weird beam into a box because science babble yeah said it does. that's why it's it's fun you know like why does crossing the streams defeat the stay puff marshmallow man dude uh it, it was because it, it makes him bigger i don't know it's fun it's cool <laughs> it's a cool way to do it that's that's essentially what they get the audience to do. And it totally works every time. Like, every single time. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's why, like, part of what sells that is the cool gadgets and everything. And yeah. I was just like, okay, I saw them in Stranger Things. I know about the, the streams, the proton packs, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen these things a bunch of times. But, like, seeing them work, and it's not like this ragtag bunch of scientists were like, this might work or it might kill all of us. And there is a little bit of that, but it's like, no, this stuff actually works to catch ghosts. Yeah. Like, we know what we're doing. <laughs> There's just something so fun about that. It was just like, the stuff works the way it's intended to. Yeah, because their commercial seems like such a grift, you know? Like, <laughs> we are ready to believe you. Um, so, as someone that didn't have nostalgia for this movie, mm -hmm. um, I'm always interested in how a comedy like this ages... Did you find this movie funny? Like, laugh out loud funny watching it for the first time in 2023? Um, at first, no. I think once I got used to kind of the brand of humor, I was I did find myself laughing a lot more. I think a lot of the classic lines that I had known before already, just like, when I saw them, I wasn't laughing. I was like... I think I expected that. I don't think it really landed as well as, like, 
pop culture would have you believe. Yeah. But there were other ones that I didn't know about that were like, oh, I didn't expect that. It was really funny. And we'll get into favorite lines in a, in a little while, but there, there were a couple that caught me off guard that I thought were very funny. And, you know, it maybe took me a while to get into it, but, like, buying into the world of the Ghostbusters being successful ghost hunters really, like, allowed me to also then buy into the humor of the guys themselves, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's something I've always, you know, heard people say about this movie is that, like, so much, and, like, the reason that they, like, can never get this movie right when they try to legacy sequel it or remake it is yeah. because, like, so much of the comedy is just the chemistry between the comedians. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. and you just, you can't just, it's it's just kind of magic how they bounce off each other in this mm-hmm. movie. It's something you've talked about earlier, and yeah, you just, uh, they haven't found four ghost-busting comedians where you put them together and they produce the same kind of magic. You know, like, the the formula isn't replicable you know <laughs> like mm-hmm. you just can't get these four guys back it's it's such <clears throat> different styles of comedy that one person might not be into other kinds but like seeing them all work together pretty much everybody will laugh at them basically they build off of each other so well despite being have despite being such different styles of comedic workers i guess so very cool Love it. That's good. Yeah, man. You got any more notes? Or are you about ready for gimmicks on this one? Uh, let me see here. I think I am okay. I think one of my favorite my favorite comedy bits. I forgot it was in there. Is when the Ghostbusters show up to the hotel. They're here to fight the final boss, and uh, they're getting riled up by the crowd. We're gonna go kick some ass, and then we gotta climb twenty two flights of stairs. And it shows them like climbing up the stairs. I think that was a hilarious bit that I was not expecting. Made me laugh quite a lot. <laughs> uh, I just thought about how miserable it would be as an out of shape guy if I had to do that many stairs. Oh my gosh, no kidding. And they all they're all kind of out of shape, so <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They're they're, they're comedians. <laughs> they're not like they're not athletes. They're not grizzled uh, warrior types, mm-hmm. so to speak. Um uh, all right, Denny. We're lighting the jack-o'-lanterns on this one. Yes, we and are. And I've got very bad news because I don't know what the gimmick of the week this week is. Can you please tell me? It was the, the uh, since we're lighting jack-o'-lanterns, when you, have, when you carve them, uh, you get a handful of pumpkin guts, uh, which is for the grossest scare of the movie. Um, the well, you know that gross feeling of a handful yeah. of gooey-ass pumpkin guts? We talked about this. Yeah, yeah. I picked my gimmick. Uh, it wor- It ended up working, but I just decided what I was going to pick for the gimmick. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm just going to make this work for whatever theme we end up doing. <laughs> Feels a little fandangled, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's yours while I think of mine? Because I f- clearly forgot to do one. So uh, when there's the ghost running wild on the town because uh, Gozer has opened the portal... Um, there is the undead cab driver that is a practical effect and not transparent. It doesn't look like a ghost in any way. It looks more like a zombie or something. Um, when I was young, that was like the image that I associated with this movie. Um, mm-hmm. Kind of like the leg and jaws. You know, where if if you asked me, cool. like I would have been like, yeah. they hold on that for like 30, 40 seconds. It's like um, and it's like two. two yeah. <laughs> this guy is like barely in the movie. But he is really grotesque um, and nasty looking, so he is my handful of pumpkin guts moment for grossest scare of the movie. Very cool. I like it. Um, I think in that vein, I will go with the Slimer guy going through Bill Murray and just leaving Ooh. like Ooh. 50 pounds of ectoplasm on the guy. It's, just, it's goopy, it's gross. And he, you just see him shoveling food in his mouth, and then he's, like, flying through people. Slimer eating food was, like, peak comedy to me as a child. That was, like, some truly <laughs> funny shit to me. <laughs> like, um, what do you got for favorite line? Uh, favorite line, I had a, I had a runner-up. This is one of those uh, joke moments that I was like, damn, this movie's really funny. Uh, we have re-entered Sigourney Weaver's apartment, and we have s- the buildings all like half destroyed at this point. And wondering where everyone is. There's a dark portal we got to get to, and 
behind Sigourney Weaver's old fridge, there is a set of stairs with like dry ice fog like rolling down them. And <laughs> Stance asks, "Hey, where do these stairs go?" And Vinkman just says, "They go up." Fucking perfect joke. <laughs> Terrific joke. Uh, but my favorite line was uh, from the beginning, where we finally, where we're interviewing the librarian, and Vinkman <laughs> asks, like, if she has, uh, if she's currently menstruating, and the head of the library is like, sorry, is that relevant? And Bill Murray just goes, back off, man. I'm a scientist. <laughs> the way he says it is just fucking fantastic. Like, how dare you ask me that question? <laughs> Get away. Get the hell away from me. Yeah. Well, Greg, that was almost my favorite line. I'm going to give Ooh, my runner up. We came really nice. close to picking the same one. Um, it's so funny. The delivery is so good. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll give a runner up to Ray Parker because I love screaming this every time I listen to the song. Bustin' makes me feel good. Uh, Ray Parker Jr., thank you for including that in your original soundtrack to this movie. Um, my number one I'm also going to give to Bill Murray. We came, we saw, we kicked its ass! I thought that was so cool when I was a kid. I thought it was so badass that he said that. Mm-hmm. You know, saying ass was pretty edgy at that time for movies. Not a lot of bad words in this movie, but yeah. that was one of them. Yeah. Makes them mean more when there's not as many. Mm-hmm. I think there's a son of a bitch in there somewhere, but I can't remember exactly. Smile, you son of a bitch, and just slam her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. I'd watch that movie. All right, Denny, um, what'd you give Ghostbusters on the old Critiker score scale there? It is a 42 out of 50. I think, uh, mm-hmm. you know, objectively... I have to lower the score a little bit from what my heart wants to rate it because it's a movie I love very much and a movie that I do think is very, very good. Um, again, if, if you're getting in the 40s from me, that means I think anyone would like it. You know, like it's it's you could yeah. show it to anybody and they should like it. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, very big compliment to Ghostbusters. I, I, do, I do have some just... Some little pricklies that just stick in my craw about this movie, mm-hmm. but we already talked about those. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. No, that's a that's a good score for a good movie, and that's about what I expected you to give it. Yep. I guess. Um, I hadn't seen this one before. I was expecting to go very high, very low. I wasn't sure where I was going to be. I think I found myself a little put off by how the watching experience was a little soiled by how referenced this movie is and at the end of the day i can't really fault the movie for that i think it's very fun um maybe it took me to a minute or two to get into it but i i i got there and i, I liked being there so i gave it a 31 out of 40 just, nice. just shy of an 8 out of 10 maybe on another watch through i'll give it i'll give it a little a little more juice but it, it's very fun and I'm glad I finally, finally saw it. Beautiful, Greg. I'm glad you finally saw it, too. I've been wanting you to see it for years. You gave me a Stay Puff Marshmallow Man giant Funko Pop, and you yes, hadn't I even seen Ghostbusters, and that made no sense to me. I just knew you like him. Thanks, buddy. Oh, we've done it. We've, we've done it, Danny. We've done it, Greg. We've done it. We've busted the ghosts. Wow. We've Boy, busted, we. and we've ghosted. Boy, did we. Denny, what are we doing next week, old pal? Next week we are doing, uh, I believe, my pick. Uh, I did one kind of silly and one kind of spooky, and so did you. Yeah. So your kind of silly was Ghostbusters. My kind of silly is Demons, a classic for the horror nerds, uh, but mm-hmm. I don't think anyone outside of horror nerds really knows this one, but it's such a fun movie that I think Greg is going to like it. I put it on Greg's horror watch list. Um, I believe Demons is available on Hulu currently. Uh, looks like AMC Plus and whatever this logo is, uh, Plex TV. I you could probably watch it on. I've I've been having it suggested to me on something. I yeah, know. it's on Shutter. It's on Shutter and uh, AMC Plus. And if you're sticking with us for the next few weeks, Shutter is going to help you a lot for my episode. I'll say. <laughs> Um, but this this looks like you can rent it on Amazon if you don't have AMC Plus or Shutter. 
And if I learned anything from our last Friday the 13th episode, don't fucking watch this movie. This is rated R, right? Yes. Don't watch it on, like, AMC TV or whatever, because you yeah. will get the censored TV version, and it will <clears throat> suck, and you won't realize it until it's way too late. Pay for the good be, shit. You'll be very mad. Watch the R-rated version. Um, be edgy. This looks cool as hell. This looks like a vibe and a half. Like, I went to the Amazon video page, and I'm there's, like, a little preview trailer yeah. playing. And this looks cool as hell. I'm not letting you down on this one, man. I'm very confident that it's going to be fun. I've got high hopes. I don't think it's a movie you're going to rate super highly, but I do think it's a movie you're going to enjoy. I, it's I, not a movie I rate super highly. You know? Yeah. Like, but it's really, really fun. Uh, like, I I enjoyed watching and love talking about like mvp2 but i gave it like a dog shit score because it sucked (laughs) but (laughs) i still loved watching it and talking about it with you so stuff can be fun without being good and i'm expecting that here and um oh i wonder if the microphone got that we'll see good neck pop oh hell of a neck pop jeez louise i carried around all my tension and when i started thinking about watching demons i was just ready (sighs) to release tension release (laughs) Feels good to bust, right? Doesn't it? Busting makes me feel good. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna remember the lyrics. <laughs> all right, Danny. Are we all done? I think we are, Greg. I think we're all done. Uh, we're ready to keep spooky season rolling, brother. Well, Danny, we're here on video, and spooky season is going to roll on. Okay. I can't think of a good segue here, Denny. But can you please just roll on through with a catchphrase? Yes, for Greg Work, the I Ain't Afraid of No Ghost Johnson. I'm Denny the Bust and Makes Me Feel Good Taylor. And this has been Movies for When We Already Busted You In. But you know what we didn't bust? What's my cage again? You can't say that. (laughs) 